So I'm about to go traveling overseas and I need to pack. And I'm going for two months. So I have some incentive to kind of get this packing right. And I kind of thought instead of just packing how I would normally sort of pack, I wanted to frame it like creating a little capsule wardrobe. So here are the current problem solving situations that we're dealing with. Like I said, I'm traveling for two months, so I need to pack to cover the two months. We will have opportunities to do laundry, but we should, you know, pack a decent amount. It's not a weekend trip. We are visiting multiple different countries and cities within those countries. So we're covering different climates, different cultures, different scenarios. Something to know about me is I wouldn't describe myself as an overpacker, but I'm also not a minimalist. I enjoy looking cute and wearing cute little outfits, but not at the expense of comfort and practicality, especially when it comes to travel. And style-wise, I'm not breaking the boundaries on reinventing the wheel of the very concept of fashion, okay? I'm usually just girly pop in a little outfit like this. But I feel like a lot of the capsule wardrobes, like minimalist little edit sort of things, don't really cater to my style. I'm not like a full neutral minimalist girly. My style's a little bit more colorful, a little bit cuter, a little bit more girly pop vibes. So in this equation, we are solving for aesthetic capsule wardrobe, something that kind of suits my more like feminine girly style, but also hopefully streamlined packing. <laughs> when you're packing for any trip, but especially like an eight week trip, every single item counts and we are looking for versatility. But before we jump into the full planning of my travel capsule wardrobe, I wanna say a big thank you to this video sponsor, Vivaya. Vivaya is a footwear brand that makes classic and stylish designs with a focus on being eco-friendly and sustainable. And they have such a variety of different styles on the website. Kind of no matter what your aesthetic is, I feel like you will find something that suits and slots into your wardrobe. And we will come back to shoes later in the video, but the Melissa boot that I picked up is the perfect boot for taking with me on this trip. Shoes can be a real killer in the luggage when it comes to just weight and bulkiness, and especially because I'm traveling in the cold. And when you're traveling, that is really important and the Melissa shoes have an upgraded insole with arch support to make sure your feet are supported for all the steps they're going to be doing. But these are super lightweight and they slot perfectly into the other items that I'm planning on bringing. Just by adding this pair of shoes into my packing is going to add a lot of versatility to all of my outfits and it's going to work with all of them as well. And I'm just generally a big fan of their shoes. Like there are a lot of shoes that could have come with me on the trip but I'm trying to, you know, trying to be sensible. I do have an ongoing code with Vivaya which is Lucy Vivaya so you can use that to save when you shop and I will link the shoes I mentioned and their website in the description box down below. Thank you again to Vivaya for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel and let's get back into it. So let me show you the progress I've made. Just pulling out my emotional support water bottle. Uh, I'm filming this video and I am also like in the middle of moving out so you will not be seeing past the confines of this space because everything else not visible for human eyes. I also would normally film this first section like sitting in a little chair and being cozy but um we have no chairs at the moment. <laughs> I personally think it's best to think backwards from the practical elements. So what is the weather or the climate that you are creating this wardrobe for? What kind of activities, you know, what is your lifestyle, those kind of things. So for this trip, we are going to Mexico, the United States, and then randomly a week at Rome at the end. It's just how the rewards points flights worked out. So as a result, the climate of this trip is a little bit mixed. And I'm actually lucky because last year I went on a trip that was about five to six weeks long. So I have experience of packing for that period of time, which is not that far off eight. And I didn't go in with as much of like a structured sort of intense approach as I am for this time, but I did pick up some key learnings from that experience, which are informing this one. But my first big tip or takeaway, and it's not some kind of like surprise revelation, but I do think it goes like such a long way, laying out everything, or if you can, hanging everything together so you can kind of visualize what the options are. And I have done that, so let me, uh, oh, I want to spit it the other way. Okay. So here is the prospective capsule wardrobe. It is not finalized, but we are getting there. Let's talk about it. It is going to be cold on the trip and layering is your best friend with that kind of weather, especially when you're going in and outdoors. So there's a lot of like putting on all the layers and being rugged up so you're nice and comfy when you are outside, but then needing to take those layers off when you are inside. I will be bringing thermals. They are not hung up here because they're ugly and I hate them, but just know I have thermals. So don't panic. Also, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna break the illusion of me being like a content creator, professional lady. It's like hot and sweaty in here, so I'm just gonna put my hair up. It was cute while it lasted. But as you can see from this rack here, 
I have a little bit of a color palette going on. And I actually sort of did that on my last trip, or more accurately, I just packed a more limited color palette than exists in my entire wardrobe. And then I was like, oh, this is handy because so many things match. I just did it more intentionally this time. And as you can see, my main sort of pops of color are baby pink and then baby blue. And then for neutrals, I am doing white, gray, denim. I guess that's also sort of baby blue because that's the kind of wash I wear, but I would say denim is a neutral. And then there is no black. I went back and forth on black. I know for a lot of people, black is like an obvious kind of neutral that everyone would have, but ultimately I decided against it. These are just my favorite colors and styling black is more of a like thing I have when I have like a full wardrobe selection to work with. You know what I mean? <laughs> because we are gonna be in some of those warmer areas and when it comes to like that more temperate, like not super cold climate, I don't really wear black at all. So I wanted it to be able to layer and mix and match across the trip. And this leads me to probably like my number one tip and that applies to packing for a trip of really any length or even curating a capsule wardrobe. And that is to not make it for a fictional version of yourself. I like that fashion is something we can experiment in and you can pick something different for a different mood. And that kind of flexibility is why I'm not like a capsule wardrobe or minimalist on the everyday because sometimes I wanna do something a little bit different, okay? But when you are trying to streamline and be utilitarian, this would not be the best time, I feel, for me to decide that I'm gonna start styling that piece of my wardrobe that I never wear. Unless it's like a very situational piece, there's probably a reason that I'm not reaching for it in my wardrobe. And that goes for things like wearing a color that you don't normally like, or you know, buying new things that you think you're going to wear on this trip. Ideally, you wanna give everything a bit of a test run before you pack it. Because banking on things that haven't been tried and tested could end up making you like miserable on a trip. And I feel like everyone's done this, but nothing's worse than like going on the trip and you realize that you really only wanna wear like one of the outfits and all the other outfits are like impractical or uncomfortable or don't work with each other. We're trying to avoid that. So one way I've decided to combat that is I am pretty much sticking to one single silhouette for the trip. So all of the pants I'm bringing are high-waisted. I wear mid-waisted or like low-waisted options at home when I have my full wardrobe available for styling options, but I will be able to mix and match everything so much easier if I just have like one primary silhouette to wear. Like mini skirts were sort of on the table for a moment, but ultimately I was just like, I am gonna be walking like 20,000 steps I'm just not trying to reinvent the wheel. In saying that, I think it's good to get some inspiration for how you wanna kind of pair and style things. So I did go on Pinterest. I'll be real, I didn't used to get Pinterest, but I think I kind of get it now. And I just kind of searched up things like cute girly winter outfits or like cute comfy winter outfits or cute girly outfits with jeans and sneakers, like lots of different search terms. to Just kind of get some inspo for maybe items I already had or like little things I could incorporate to just give some versatility and styling to the outfits I was already kind of planning. So I sort of created some outfit formulas where I can kind of switch out different elements to make them feel a little bit fresh. But let's go through what I have. Up first, I just have three little t-shirts. The first couple of weeks in Mexico are gonna be like mid twenties. So that's what these t-shirts are for. So these are just more practical. And then when I was talking about Pinterest and I was looking at a bunch of different outfits and I was thinking about the last trip I took and kind of how that went in terms of styling, I feel like I was lacking some longer sleeve basics, particularly ones that were more slimline or like fitted to the body. So apart from like one other thing, this is the only thing I bought with this trip in mind. And that is three long sleeve white tops from Everlane. And they basically all could be swapped out with one another, but we have like a scoop neck, a turtleneck, and then a Henley. And I got these because if we look at the kind of pants I'm bringing, like I said, they are all high waisted silhouettes. And for me personally, with a high waisted pant, I prefer to wear them with either a cropped something or something that is fitted and can be tucked in. And obviously for colder climates, the latter seem to make more sense for layering. So for something like this pair of jeans, I could wear it with any of the three different necklines. And that as like a base outfit structure, I would be happy with all three different versions. 
Same goes for the plaid pants, and then I can do the same thing for the other bottoms I'm planning on bringing. This is where I have not necessarily taken my own advice in terms of, you know, test running things and packing what you know. I am gonna try on a bunch of these different outfits and that, again, I would reiterate, really good recommendation is trying on as many different combinations as you can, because that is also a really good way to find out that actually one item doesn't really work with anything except that one other item. And so maybe it's not as versatile as you would like it to be. And then this top, I was tossing up bringing because I took with me on my last trip and I wore it a lot then. I don't know if I would wear it as much on this trip now, but I'm thinking I should maybe still take it just in case, I'm not sure. But this is like a little cropped polo fleece from Aritzia. It's very comfortable. It's like oversized, it's roomy. I like the comfort aspect of it, but because of the outerwear layers I'm planning on bringing, this wouldn't really layer too well with them. And I even found that on my last trip, this doesn't layer super well because it's like a little bit bulky and baggy. It just doesn't have as much versatility as the other pieces. I also think once I get to the colder parts of the trip, I will not be wanting to wear something cropped. So this will kind of become obsolete in those scenarios. I'm leaning towards maybe not because I do have like the t-shirts. Dunno. I'm not really giving authority here, am I? At the end of the day, as fun as it is to prep and prepare, things will just always happen. And you do kind of just need to go with the flow a little bit. I try and be type A so that I can be type B. And if like worst comes to worst and I need to buy like another top or something, that is okay. I'm also inclined to leave a little bit of space for said shopping slash treats. So yeah, I'm thinking this one's maybe a no, but I'll look at my suitcase as it's packed and I will hopefully be doing a packing video as well. So look forward to that. Then for pants, I have my pair of jeans that I'm gonna be bringing. I feel like these will probably get the most wear just cause jeans are so versatile. They're very comfortable. These are the Lee, I believe they're the high baggy, but more importantly, they're really comfy. They still look nice and like fit nicely, but they're not like super duper like tight and snatched. I like a high waist moment, but I'm not overly focused on being super snatched or anything on my trip. Because again, comfort, walking, and I am layering. So I wanna have the ability to be able to like tuck things in. And you can't do that when you're like super snatched from the gear. Then I have this pair of Jagger and Stone pants, the little like plaid blue ones. And these I have put on the rack because on my last trip, I didn't initially pack them, but I did like the first half of the trip with my mom in Japan. And then I went and met up with my boyfriend in Korea. And then we did a trip in Korea together. So as he was coming over to Korea, he asked me like, oh, is there anything you want me to bring you that you don't have? And I was like, yeah, can you bring that plaid blue pair of pants? Cause I like really could do with them right now. I don't like wear these a heap in my day-to-day -day life. But for travel, they come in so handy because they are quite comfy. Again, they are roomy, but they still look nice. I could totally layer thermals under this. They work with sneakers and they would also layer nicely with all of the different tops I'm bringing. And they just fit nicely into the color scheme. I don't know. They're kind of like the sleeper hit of my wardrobe. And then last pair of pants is this pair, which are from a Korean brand. I don't think they sell them anymore, which I feel bad about because every time I talk about them and wear them, people do ask me, but I got them from Yes Style. They're from a brand called Nuf Poem and they are just like a cotton pair of corduroy pants, but as you can see, they have an elastic waistband. Now, it is the one element of these pants that I don't really like is the elastic waistband because I think it makes them look really, really casual, especially because I often go to style these with like something really cropped and then you can see the waistband. I don't know, I wish the front waistband part was like flat just to, you know, just edge up that formality a tiny little bit. But I will say these are amazing for flights because they are essentially like comfy track pants because on flights, you know, you go up in the air and your flesh bag kind of swells up. It's a whole thing. And these just are like so comfy. But when you pair them with like a jumper underneath and stuff, when you can't see the waistband, these look a little bit more put together. And even wearing them with a gray t-shirt like this, that is just a little bit longer line than the usual kind of cropped tee that I like to wear does sort of hide the waistband. And it's just a really cute like travel outfit. And we are doing quite a few flights on this trip and like a couple of buses. And those are the days when you just want something super duper comfy that is like the comfort level, much like pajamas, but just a step up in appearance. And so that is the primary reason why I'm bringing this. I did consider bringing like a little matching cute like tracksuit sort of set, but for the purposes of economy of space, this made more sense because I can also pair these with a jumper like this that is longer line 
And then again, it can be like dressed up and it doesn't look super, super cash. And they are about to fall off the hanger. So those are the three pant options. And I think they will serve me very well. And again, they can all be paired with all of the different tops. Some combinations may be like cuter than others, but they can all mix and match, you know? Now, here's one that I'm also on the fence on and I'm leaning towards yes, but I am packing one skirt. I have considered packing a dress, but I do think separates are the way to go for me this time in terms of mix and match and versatility. This is a silk skirt that I picked up recently from Philly Boo. It comes in a matching set with the top, but I thought just bringing the skirt would just allow for like a lot of extra utility for not that much extra luggage space because it's quite thin and small, especially for the portions of the trip that are not as cold. And just going out for dinner and pairing it with something like a t-shirt is just like a very nice sort of slightly dressy option. And I can still wear this with sneakers or boots. I saw a lot of pictures on Pinterest of like a big oversized chunky jumper with a tonally similar colored silk slip skirt. And I kind of thought like those two are a really nice combo either out or I have also got this over here. I said I'm not packing black. I kind of lied. I'm packing one black belt. <laughs> I'm just bringing the belt for styling versatility for the big chunky boys, which I'll talk about in a sec. I'm a little worried it'll turn into a piece where I'm like bringing it and then I'm actually not gonna wear it. I don't like packing stuff only to then just not use them, but I feel less bad about it when it's this like small. I think the benefits outweigh the cons of the very small amount of luggage space this would potentially take up. So I think I'm gonna take it and we'll see how we go. But I hope you see my vision. And then these are my main two like chunky jumpers I'm going to bring. These are kind of almost like the same silhouette, but just one is blue, one is pink. And both of these will match with the jeans. Both of these will match with the gray pants. I prefer the blue one with the blue pants because it's more of like a tonal kind of fun monochromatic look. But in a pinch can also do this one. The pink one looks nice with the pink skirt. I probably wouldn't do the blue one with the pink skirt. You could do that though. I have worn both of these a lot. Both of these are pretty much entirely wool blends. So even though they're not like hugely bulky or anything, they are very warm and retain heat well, but they also don't get too hot but you can also layer them. I can like bunch them up underneath and tuck them into things because they're not too thick and chunky. So these were like no brainers. I knew I was gonna take these pretty much the whole time. They're definitely coming. And these two are my kind of more fun layering options. Just kind of break up the vibe a little bit. I'll talk about this one first. This one here is my little zip up jumper from Teddy Fresh family, family. This is also primarily wool blend. The pastel colors are the same kind of pastel colors I'm matching everything with. I can have this as a layering item with a t-shirt again for more of that like kind of chilly but not that chilly sort of weather but I can also layer this with thermals and like the turtleneck and zip it up for a little bit of a colder scenario. This has been something that whenever it gets a little bit chillier I do get a lot of wear out of it. It's just easy to put on and it's like a bit more of a statement piece but it's not like super complicated to style and like the zip up vibe is just a little bit different to like a pullover sweater. You know? And then this one is maybe one where I'm like, I like the idea of who I'm gonna be if I wear this, but I'm not sure if I will, but I think I will, and I need your guidance, but I think it's fun. But I picked this up off Depop. This is like a little Miss Selfridge, like cable knit, button up cardigan with a faux fur collar. I know this is like a trendy thing, the faux fur collar, and people are over it. I still really like it. I really liked it like the whole time. I did toss up about getting this one or like the House of Sunny one because everyone is selling their House of Sunny cardigans, but I just preferred this one a bit more for my style. But this is where I was like, maybe I get Pinterest now because when I was looking at outfit inspo, I was really drawn to like this image that I found because I was like, wow, it's like such a casual, like chill outfit, but the jacket really adds like a very feminine, like girly vibe to it without it being like too like high maintenance of a look because a lot of looks like styling these style them with like mini skirts and tights and heels and boots. And I love all of that, especially when I'm here and I have my full wardrobe, but I didn't want to like pack all of those like extra things. Cause then it's like, 
You know what I mean? I wanted to really make sure I could mix and match everything. And I feel like this would look cute with the jeans because that was like the original vision with like sneakers. I also feel like it does match these pants. I thought it would look cute with the gray potentially. It's like I have my very practical items and I'm like, okay, this one's like a little bit less practical. It's a bit more fun. One hour Lucy calls you to talk about the outfits she's packing for a trip, rain, relaxing, ASMR sounds for sleep. Uh, and then we come to this and this may be also a controversial decision. The coldest part of our trip is going to be a two week period where we are in DC and then New York. Outside of that, Mexico is not gonna be that cold. New Orleans is gonna be a little bit chilly, but fine for like layering and the thermal kind of vibe. And then Rome is gonna be similar to New Orleans weather, like not that cold, a little bit chilly, can do with the jumper and layering options and you'll be sweet. DC and New York, I know are gonna be really cold. And I have had people tell me it's gonna be really cold and I need to bring a coat. If I was just going, to New York or DC, I would bring a coat. I have this coat, which I think would work. Um, I do need to get it like freshened up a bit because it's a little discolored. It's like my little vintage coat that I really like because this is like a good warm layering coat. This is like shielding on the inside, but also I feel like it's very heavy and bulky and I will wear it for like a quarter of the trip and I'm not sure I don't know I think I'm a little bit Delulu I'm somewhat convinced that with the power of layering and thermals I won't need a coat in DC or New York and I think that's maybe not true and maybe this is the scenario where if I had like a little like roll up puffer jacket or something like that this is where that would make sense but I don't have one of those and so I'm thinking of potentially just rolling the dice not bringing this and then if it's like really cold i can just go buy one in dc thoughts on this theory because i went on like a little weekend trip with max to tasmania in winter of last year because we went to this like art festival thing and the weather there was like only a few degrees off and i brought a coat to that and I generally didn't need to wear it. And I was like fine with just thermals and some layers. So I'm hoping maybe it could be the same. And then if I'm wrong, I'll just like take the L. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna just put this back over in the props not pile. Cause I think that's not, it just, just, mm -hmm. Then I have this scarf at the end. The scarf has pink and blue in it and it matches the other things here. I also like traveling with a scarf because it works as a blanket. You can fold it up and it can be a pillow. It's very lightweight. You can just, you know, also style it like a scarf, which is what it is. I packed this on my last trip and found it to be useful and handy. And again, didn't take up a bunch of space, wasn't a nuisance to take, so good choice, I think. And then this guy's been hanging out over here, but bags. I'm a bag girl. I love bags and I did some real thinking about this because I'll show you the bag I took with me last time that was kind of like my daily driver and that was this one here. This is my like little Telfar shopping tote. I've gotten so much wear out of this bag. I love this bag. I used this bag last time when I was traveling but I found as good as it is to just like throw on and it has like quite a bit of space. I took this as my like personal item slash carry on on my long haul flights last time. And you can see the straps are quite thin and the bag is quite like the base is quite skinny. So it can fit like my laptop and my camera and my phone and my passport and all those things. But then it gets like very full and very, very heavy. And I was like, I don't know if this is great for the straps. Like it's, it was fine. Nothing bad happened, but it was basically like full to capacity and like a somewhat precarious capacity <laughs> and it was really handy for like day to day for like carrying stuff around like my camera and everything because I was doing a lot of filming so I needed to carry around my camera and batteries like every day and I was pretty much planning on packing this but I actually ended up getting a different piece of carry-on luggage that is a similar like dimensions to this it's just a little bit more designed for travel specifically rather than being just like a casual tote and because we're taking so many flights and like going from point a to point b across the eight weeks it was a little like just a touch too small and not super practical for trying to carry on stuff for long haul flights so i don't think i'm going to bring this with me i think i am going to bring this one instead i wanted something like chill crossbody would match everything so i got this little like silver nylon 
Kipling bag, which is like a little bit random, I feel, but I think it's gonna work very well for the trip. I put this on my like little Christmas wish list. I got it through Amazon, but I wanted something that was lightweight, able to be crossbody. Again, hands free, comfort, utility. I also can zip it closed so it's not like hanging open. And it's just like, kind of low key, you know what I mean? It's not super extra. And it can actually surprisingly fit a lot. Like it looks quite small, but I'm able to fit my phone, camera, wallet, everything in this. And then I will also bring a little reusable shopping tote, which will be able to fit in here as well. So then if I do suddenly need more bag, I have more bag, but just small and then be more bag. I've been lucky enough to never have anything happen where I've traveled, even places that are kind of known for pickpocketing and stuff like that. And I've managed to avoid it. So fingers crossed, touch wood. But something like this that you can have really close to your body and like right next to you and also like over you like that. Apart from like an actual comfort and practical use, I do think is also like good for travel stuff generally, if you're being wary. Also the bag is like a silvery gray that matches with everything. There is like not really an outfit here where I feel like that would look really off or weird. And then I'm also gonna pack one bathing suit yet to be determined. Don't know what's happening there. I'm gonna sort it out later. Swimwear is not my forte, but we're going to like the beach in Mexico. And there are these cenotes, which are like these like beautiful water magical holes. Mm. Not sure about the magical holes combination, but hey, mm. magical holes. But that will be in there. Also, I'll be packing undergarments, but I don't think that's really part of the like capsule wardrobe thing. Although in saying that, I do think it is good to test out the undergarments you're bringing with what you're wearing, because sometimes, especially with like really fitted, like white tops like that, I got to check like the honkers situation, make sure the honkers aren't out. Have I called them honkers on this channel before? Have I done that? <laughs> Have we talked about honkers? Anyway, I'm looking for like seamless honker coverage. But then the two pairs of shoes I'm taking are just these ones. I've considered taking more shoes, but honestly, the amount of trips I've been on where I'm like, I'm gonna pack some really cute shoes. And then I just kind of end up wearing like the comfiest ones I can. I just walk a lot on trips. That's what we like doing. <laughs> just walking around and seeing sights. So it's gotta be things that are gonna be comfy. These are the Sketches Delights. I also got these online. I will link them below, but these are like white ones with like little silver details, but they're just very simple. They've got a nice cushiony sole in them. I like having a bit of hype on them. Just aesthetically, I like what it does for the look. I feel like they will be kind of destroyed by the end of that trip, but that is okay. As long as I'm getting the steps in and the wear out of them, it's fine. And then I am bringing my Vivaya Melissa boots. These are like a little, they have like an elastic like sock situation. They are very, very comfy and lightweight. And just for things like going out to dinner on the occasion that you are going somewhere that maybe has a little bit more of a dressier dress code or you just want to be a little bit dressier. They match well with all of the pants. They would match cute with the skirt and they fit perfectly into like the color situation we have going on. It's actually really hard to find this light gray kind of boot. And these ones are super duper comfy and because they have like a bit of stretch to them, you can put like quite a nice thick, warm, chunky sock. But even like the tops of these can like fold down. They really don't take up a lot of space. They're super lightweight. And again, it just, it's the trade off. Like, will the amount of space this takes up in my suitcase pay off in versatility, in utility, that kind of thing. I haven't finished packing jewelry. I will do that in my packing video, but jewelry, like some earrings. I usually just take like a couple of different pairs to swap out, but I tend not to wear like heaps of jewelry when I'm traveling just cause I'm like a bit of a clumsy numpty and I'm worried I'm gonna like lose it or something. <laughs> I don't go too ham on the jewelry, but then I have accessories. I'm gonna put them in like a little soft case or something, but I'm not decided if I'm gonna bring all of these, but these are just my recommendations for what to bring for versatility. Again, you might have different style to me, but these are just some ideas. My number one recommendation, especially like at the moment, I know they're very trendy, but ribbons. <laughs> there is an outfit I wore on my Japan trip where I did my hair up in these little ribbons. And it's like one of my favorite like hair and makeup sort of looks I've done. And I felt so cute. Admittedly, I believe that was maybe the first or second day of my trip. So I think I was just in a very good mood as well. <laughs> but little like ribbons, just bringing a few, just provides versatility. You can put your hair in a ponytail and put a ribbon on that. You can put them in like little braids and wear it like that. 
they just add a lot of extra flair and style while taking up literally like no weight and no room. And this one's more personal for like my style and accessory preferences, um, but headbands and slash or berets or hats. A lot of hats don't really work for me. <laughs> I feel there are some hats I try on and I'm like, this doesn't like, I don't know, caps. I haven't been able to get along with caps, but little berets like this, I have like a gray one and a pink one. Again, very lightweight, take up like no room really, but offer some options to the point where if I don't really wear them a bunch, I'm not gonna be mad. They're like this small and nothing-y in the suitcase. Admittedly, lots of small and nothing-y things do build up to be not so small and nothing-y. So I don't know if I'll bring both or if I'll bring them at all, but it's something I'm like workshopping. But I will just show you. I'll show you this like little pink one. And I realize this is like a little bit twee and like preppy and not for everyone. But to be honest, I've been wearing berets for years and I still really like them. I think they just work for me. Let this video's comment section be the one where I will find out that they do not in fact work for me. <laughs> but something like that. It's just cute. This is kind of just giving woman discovers accessories and believe me, I know. But I think even if you have a really simple wardrobe, even if I only packed like white top and gray pair of pants, having different accessories and like styling my hair in different ways, I think would really do a lot. So I'm thinking about bringing a couple of those maybe. And then headbands, again, I haven't decided. This one's like a little bit of a padded one and it's kind of tricky to style, so like unsure. But they're quite practical, comfy, cute. They keep your hair kind of push back and out of the way. I also will not be taking my beloved Dyson Airwrap with me on the trip because it will not work. In the States, it could potentially explode. So we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna try and use like my heatless curler overnight thing. We'll see how we go. So things like these little accessories, I think will go quite far to give me kind of like the element of play and fun that I like having in a wardrobe. And that is the planned capsule wardrobe for this trip. It may change a little bit with the final packing and whatnot, but that's what I am going with. I think it's a decent plan, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and let me know if you've been traveling recently or if you have a capsule wardrobe, what some of your best tips are. Cause you know, then we can like share all the knowledge and put it in a big pile in the comment section. Then we can all feast like that one scene in like Spirit Away where they're like, Bleh. but like on knowledge. Yum, yummy learning, education, crowdsourced information. But if you do want to, follow my trip as it's happening, you can go check out my social links in the description below. I saw, I think it was Beep World, her video about her like capsule wardrobe she took when she visited her hometown, I think it was. And then she did like a part two where she talked about what she actually ended up wearing, what she didn't wear and stuff. And I thought that was really cool and good and like a nice, reflection of you know planning versus practicality and what actually ends up happening. So let me know if you want to see like a follow-up after I come back from the trip about what I actually ended up wearing. And with that we have reached the end of the video and I've got to go back to packing my suitcase and packing up my apartment to move out. And I hope you've enjoyed this sort of like chatty vibe of talking through how we make a little cute aesthetic capsule wardrobe cute aesthetic fingers crossed i hope so a big thank you again to vivaya for sponsoring this video and making cute nice shoes that i can take on my trip that fit in perfectly to my capsule wardrobe and also shoes that i wear just generally day to day i wear the shoes all the time as always thank you so so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye